what's up, cop gang? All right, so we got this crazy problem here. So we got this dude with the shovel, and there's a lot of forces and a lot of angles. So how are we going to do this, right? Well, we want to find the moment around point A at the bottom there. So if we're trying to find the moment of A, we're going to need a couple of things. We're going to need position vectors from the origin, or A, to where the force acts. So we're going to need two position vectors, and we're going to need these two forces in um, in uh, x, y, and z, basically, i, j, and k, but there's no k, so that's gonna make things a little easier, at least. So the first part of this problem is basically a geometry problem, right? We need to do the geometry to figure this stuff out. So let's go ahead and do the geometry, right? So we need to know, basically, relative to the, the positive and negative. So we have 30 degrees here, but that's 30 degrees orthogonal, perpendicular to the shovel. So if we want to get it perpendicular to the ground instead, we're going to need to draw this line out here. And then what we find out here is that this is a similar triangle to here. So we know that this angle is then 20 degrees, so that this big angle here is 50 degrees. So that's a useful thing we need to know. That gives us a 25 um, orthogonal, or basically relative to the ground. So we have a 20 degrees there, so we need to find out what, um, basically, we need to find out what this angle here is. So, we know that angle, we find 65 uh, from the good to the top, right? So that means that this whole thing is 65 here. So this is 65. But we're trying to find it, this angle here, basically. We want to find what this angle is, because this is the angle that we're looking at relative to the ground. So we know, again, um, we're going to need to do some right triangle stuff. But we know that this side here is a similar triangle to this triangle. So we know that here is 20 degrees. So that means that if you take 65 minus 20, we're going to get that this angle is 45 degrees perpendicular to the ground. Or um, like relative to the ground, it's 45 degrees pushed that way. So there we go. So we have all of our things uh, relative to the ground. So let's go ahead and find our position vectors. So we're going to label our position vector 1. Is our position vector 1 is from here to here, right? So this is going to be R1. So R1. Uh, I guess R A one. I don't know. Yeah, R A one because it goes from A to one. We'll label that point one. So R A one. Well, what does it do, right? Well, we know its position. We know its length is 450 millimeters. So we can say it's 450. But then we need to use sine or cosine. So if we're trying to find how much it goes in the x direction, it's going to be um, sine of 20, right? Because 20 is here. So it's going to go sine of 20 opposite. It goes that much back. But it also goes negative x direction. So we need to put a negative here, sine of 20 degrees. And that's in the i direction. So then for the j direction, it's again 450. We're going to use cosine of 20 degrees. Uh, yeah, that's wrong. Because I, yeah, I just, I looked at the wrong answer. There's actually nothing really specially wrong about that. OK, I'm going to actually relabel all this. This is going to be point 2. And then this is 1, because force 1 is here, force 2 is here. It's going to make more sense. So this is force two, because we're going to label this point two and this point one. So then, if we look at it like that, it's going to be negative 0.154i plus 0.423j in meters. Cool, so we got the first one. Let's do our second one. So ra1, that's going to be the one from here all the way up to this point, ra1 is again four, negative four, or not four, negative 450. All right, we have this new distance, right? It's gonna be 450 plus 800, which is, uh, so 1250 sine of 40, or sine of 20 again, and it's gonna be negative again, i plus 1250 cosine of 20, j. So right, the 1250 just comes from adding this and this together, and then the sine again is just finding this Distance in the x, cosine distance in the y. Ra1 is equal to, that's the number I wrote down earlier, negative 0 0.428i plus 1.17j meters. Don't forget your units. Make sure that you use the right units. So that's good for us. Now we need to find our forces in terms of x and y. Right? We, have, we know it's magnitudes of force 1 and force 2. We need to find the, um, basically, it's x and y components, because that's going to help us do the cross product later. Okay.
Okay, so force one, let's look at force, or I guess let's look at force two first. Force two, right? So if we're looking at it as a vector instead of a magnitude, we're gonna need to take the 25, and then we're gonna need to take cosine of 50, right? Because cosine of 50 is gonna take how much it goes in the x direction. Now we know it's going positive x, positive y, so we don't need to worry about negatives or positives. Plus again, 25 sine of 50 j. So you're gonna get force two, of, as a vector, is equal to 16.1 i plus 19.2 j. And this is Newton's. Cool. So then let's go ahead and do force one. Force one is equal to, uh, it's 12 newtons. It's going to be 12 newtons cosine. Or do we want to do cosine? We don't want to do cosine. So first of all, we know it's negative, right? So we know it's negative, so it's gonna be negative there. So it's gonna be negative, and then again, so the angle is 45 degrees, and we're trying to find how much it goes to the x, so we're gonna use sine because it's opposite. So it's gonna be sine of 45 i, and then again, minus 12 cosine of 45 to get the other component. And we know it's both negative because it's pointing into quadrant to about three. So force one is then equal to negative 8.49i minus 8.49j newtons. Okay, so we did all this preliminary work, and now we can finally take the cross products that we need to do. So yeah, you can see down here. So the moment, right, what is the moment defined as? The moment is the cross of around a, is the cross product, I guess it's not really a vector in two dimensions, but it kind of is, but whatever, it doesn't need to worry about it. So it's, you always have to take the position vector crossed with the force. But we have two, right? So if you want to find the moment from two forces, then you have to just take the, you just have to add the two cross products together. So we're going to start with A1 and then force one, right? A1 is all the way to the top and then force one. And then we're going to add that to the cross product of force A2 times force of two, or cross product of two. So what is this going to look like, right? Well, let's write it out. So the cross is going to be i, j, k. So rate, or the position vector, we found that earlier, a1. So that's going to be negative 0 0.428, uh, 1.17, and 0 in the k because there's no i, or no j. And then this is going to be negative 8.49. Negative 8.490. We got this from force one, right? Cool. So then we have to add this to the cross product of i, j, k, uh, of force or the, the direction vector of two, and then force two. So we found that way earlier up here. So it's going to be negative 0 0.154, 0 0.423, 0. And then this is the force, uh, force two, right? This one here. So 16.1, 19.20, cool. So now we have to compute these, right? Uh, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and erase everything because we have all that we need, basically. We're just gonna solve this cross product from here on out. Cool, okay, so let's do the cross product, right? So when you do cross product, you start with i, so we're gonna say m is equal to i, times 1.17 times zero, so it's gonna be zero, minus negative 8.49 times zero, so it's gonna be minus zero or plus zero i, so there's no i component, cool. Uh, so then we're gonna take the j component, so we start with j, so we take this and multiply it by zero, minus this times zero, so then again it's zero, and then we get to k, so it's gonna be negative 0.4, Negative, let's just do it, four, 0 0.428, negative 8.49, minus negative 8.49, 1.17. Uh, yeah, cool, so that gives you, um, I don't know, what does that give you? I don't know, but let's just simplify it, let's keep writing it out. So then that'll be K. So I'm writing in i, j, k, but basically what you're gonna notice when you do two dimensions is that the i and the j cancel, they give you zero. So when you find the moment, it's just gonna be whatever the k value is. 
So, and then we have to do this next cross product too. So we're gonna find again, it's gonna be zero i plus zero j. You can figure this part out for yourself. And then plus, so it'll be negative, negative this, so that, negative 0 0.154 times 19.2 minus 16.1, 0 0.423 k. So if you take this, minus this, plus this, minus this, you're gonna get that the magnitude of A, and you can just get rid of the K, because we know that that's what it's in, it's gonna be 3.80 newton meters, right? Not too hard to figure that part out. Um, yeah, we're in newton meters, right? Yeah, we're in newton meters. Okay, cool, so that's the answer right there. So it goes 3.80 newton meters. So that's for part B, but part A, there's actually a part A. Part A asks what um, direction is it turning, right? So direction, if it's positive, if it's positive, that means it goes, if it means it goes counterclockwise, right? If that's positive. If it's negative, it's gonna go uh, clockwise. So it's a positive number, so it's gonna go counterclockwise. So there you go, that's how you solve this problem. It's a lot of work, right? I know this is kind of a long problem, but basically, it's just breaking everything down. It's like doing the stuff you've done a million times already and then just plugging it into a cross product. So not too bad. Hopefully, you guys can figure it out. Uh, if you need more uh, help with this kind of stuff, feel free to come to me. And yeah, I'll see you next time, guys. Peace.